Rahman Rahim in the name of Allah the most gracious and the most merciful Welcome to Global School System online teaching support program This is a lecture of class 8th and 9th new I am Sir Muhammad Saqib Bafur and today we would be discussing unit number 4 Hazrat Asma Razi Taala Anha Synopsis Synopsis is a detailed summary of any lesson paragraph wise moving on background to the lesson certainly every chapter has a background being a teacher i would not uh, like to start the lesson directly and would never jump on paragraph number 1 directly background to the lesson is certainly you need to understand first that what is basically migration what is meant by the term migration migration is basically a shift from a movement from one place to another place permanently for some positive reason next why migration is done i have already explained i re explain it migration is done due to some purpose sometimes the purpose is the happy purpose and sometimes the purpose is the sad purpose sometimes due to the problem the migration is done sometimes for the betterment the migration is done so basically migration means that a movement from one location to another location due to purpose this chapter is highlighting the major migration from islamic history from early islamic history from prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam's time period that is migration from makka to medina when migration took place at that time medina was known as yasrab the people of yasrab themselves one day met to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Uh, at midnight and they welcomed prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the city of medina they invited prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the city of medina because at that time when they invited prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the city of medina yasrab was uh, involved and completely indulged in the civil war situation and the people were not stable at all as far as the social relationships are concerned so the people of yasrab were convinced of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's prophethood so they invited prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to their city so that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam could come there and he could control the city as a head of the state this is basically the really blessed journey from makka to medina i would relate it to the hajj and umrah pilgrims the people who are blessed with the hajj and umrah in their life the people who live in kingdom of saudi arabia they often get a chance to travel to makkah or to medina but the ones who travel from makkah to medina while performing umrah or while performing hajj the happiness is on the peak a person feels a gigantic happiness that cannot be expressed in the words so whenever a person travel from makka to medina in the bus certainly or in a car which takes 5 to 6 hours the maximum or 5 hours one can have a look quite clearly that 5 to 6 hours or 4 to 5 hours are taken these days to travel from makka to medina but in the old times in the early time period when it was uh, the migration basic migration in the prophethood time period in the prophet sallam's time period it would have been much difficult the weather condition was certainly the biggest challenge the migration took place on camels and uh, desert areas and the challenges various challenges certainly it was the tough journey now the question arises who were the immigrants first i need to define that what are basically immigrants immigrants are the ones who migrate from one location to an other location and the, the migration which took from makka to medina it had the last messenger that is prophet muhammad peace be upon him sallallahu alaihi wa sallam and hazrat abu bakr sadiq razi taala anhu this chapter is also highlighting the daring muslim women 
the daring nature of the Muslim women, how they have contributed to their religion. So this is a bit background to the layers. You need to understand that what is migration. You need to understand that why migration from Makkah to Medina took place. One of the reasons from migration I have already told you. Another reason is that it was it had become completely impossible for the Muslims to stay in Makkah at that time because the people of Makkah, the tribal heads, the tribal chiefs were dealing the people of Makkah in a very bad way. They were brutally, brutally treated. So the one of the group went before and later on Prophet Muhammad accompanied with Hazrat Abu Bakr Sadiq Razi Tala and who also went to Medina for living there for spending rest of the years there. Moving on, Cave Thor background, very important cave, very important. Like Cave Hira is extremely important, which has the significance of Cave Hira has already been discussed in unit number one. Cave Sor in English, since Sa is never translated in English as Sa, it is translated as Th. So Cave Thor, Sor is known as Cave Thor. Prophet Muhammad and his companion Hazrat Bakr Sadiq Razi Tala Anha Anho sorry, took refuge in Cave Thor for two days and one night. They took refuge there on the commandment of Allah because uh, tribal heads were after them and uh, they were looking for them and they wanted to capture both of them dead or alive. So that is why on the commandment of Allah they stayed in Cave Thor and they were rescued in that cave moving on paragraph number one the main idea that is running across in paragraph number one is the migration and tribal chiefs migration from Makkah to Medina took place in 622 AD 622 AD means AD means after the birth of Jesus Christ and migration from Makkah to Medina, I have already described that Prophet Muhammad migrated from Makkah to Medina. And Medina at that time was known as Yasrat. Next point. If the immigrants were the last messenger and Hazrat Abu Bakr Sadiq Razi Tala Anho. This paragraph is highlighting the wrath of the tribal chiefs on this migration wrath means the anger the fury they were extremely angry why they were angry they thought that the people who were living in Makkah are their property and without their permission they cannot go anywhere and specifically the Muslims because to them the emerging religion of Islam was the rebellion so they never wanted these people to migrate to Medina so they were once they came to know that the migration is taking place and Prophet Muhammad Sallam and Hazrat Bakr Sadiq Razi Tala and who are not there at home. So they were looking for them like anything and they were trying their level best to just capture them dead or alive. So they were extremely angry that how they have how they had dared to not listen to them and to cross the limits of Makkah city. Next, next point, their determination for finding them, certainly tribal heads were completely determined to find them. They offered huge bounties on their capture dead or alive. They themselves were also looking for both of them, but they also offered the huge rewards to the people who would bring them both of them either dead or alive. Next, paragraph number two, preparations for the journey. The preparations for the journey uh, took place at the residence of Hazrat Abu Bakr Sadiq Razi Anho. In this regard, the useful services were given by Hazrat Asma Razi Tala Anha. Hazrat Asma Razi Tala Anha is the daughter of Prophet, uh, is the daughter of Hazrat Abu Bakr Sadiq Razi Tala Anho and is the step sister of Hazrat Aisha Razi Tala Anha. She prepared the food and tied it on the camel back with her own belt as nothing else was available. For this very act, she was given the title of Zatun Natikin, which means the lady with the two bells or the lady who have the two bells. So this was the title given to her by Prophet Muhammad and this title was given out of love. 
this shows her love for prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that she was so determined and she was so respectful of him that Uh, when nothing was available to tie the food, so she tied the food with her own belts. Paragraph number three. The main idea running across in paragraph number three is Cape Thor and the dangerous service provided by Hazrat Asma Razi Tala Anha. Since the people were looking after them, and Hazrat Asma Razi Tala Anha took the delicate responsibility of providing the food to the people to the immigrants. who were there in cave thor so it was the very delicate task and she used to accomplish this task at the night where and he tried she tried her level best that she could not be seen by anybody moving on the points the immigrants were supposed to take refuge in cave thor on the commandment of allah they stayed there for two days and one night during this stay hazrat asma razi tala anha provided them the food the mountain is so rugged cave thor is so rugged so rough mountain the slightest mistake could have endangered hers and Im- immigrant's life she bravely provided her services the dangers were involved in this task the fear of being detected was the major one paragraph number 4 abu jahl's dealing with hazrat asma razi tala anha abu jahl's was uh, abu jahl was one of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's uncle and uh, abu jahl is his uh, title because he is considered he was considered the head of the jahil people means the one who were the disbeliever and he never ever uh, listened to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the dealing between hazrat asma razi tala anha and abu jahl was not good at all abu jahl visited hazrat abu bakr sadiq razi tala anha on his house he began to uh, knock the door quite violently with anger he inquired about hazrat abu bakr sadiq razi tala anho hazrat asma razi tala anha replied that how would she know Abu Jahl's fit of fury Abu Jahl's fit of fury means that Abu Jahl got extremely angry when Hazrat Asma Razi Tala Anha replied him in this way Abu Jahl slapped Hazrat Asma so hard that her fe- that her earring fell off and the intensity of the slap was great So then as well Hazrat Asma Razi Tala Anha remained steadfast and she did not reveal the secret this shows her bravery moving on paragraph number 5 Hazrat Asma Razi Tala Anha's grandfather Hazrat Asma Razi Tala Anha's grandfather was a disbeliever at the time of migration his name is Hazrat Abu Kahafa he was very old and had become blind he was worried about his grandchildren he thought that his son has taken all the wealth hazrat asma razi tala anha consoled her consoled him sorry by her wisdom she put the pebbles on the place of jewels and covered them she told her grandfather to come and observe he touched the cloth and his concern was relieved certainly the wealth the jewels were taken by hazrat bakr sadiq razi tala anha because uh, it was a new life to start in madina so the wealth was taken away but to relieve her grandfather the pebbles were gathered pebbles are the small round stone there is a difference between a pebble and a stone so pebbles were gathered up and it uh, and they were covered up with a piece of cloth grand her grandfather touched the cloth and he was relaxed that the jewels are still there this shows this incident shows the wisdom of hazrat asma razi tala anha moving on paragraph number 6 This entire paragraph is basically about the personality of Hazrat Asma Razi Tala Anha. She is among the early few who accepted Islam. She is the daughter of Hazrat Abu Bakr Sadiq Razi Tala Anha. Anho. She is the step sister of Hazrat Aisha Razi Tala Anha. Hazrat Aisha Razi Tala Anha is the eleventh wife of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and she has the benefit, or she has the the advantage that when prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away uh, he was present there in the house of hazrat aisha razi tala anha and since prophets are buried on the same place where they are uh, where they pass away so prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's grave 
His Rosa Mubarak is there in the house of Hazrat Aisha Razi Tala Anha. Next, next point is Hazrat Asma Razi Tala Anha was the wife of Hazrat Zubair bin Al Awam. Hazrat Asma's son name is Hazrat Abdullah bin Zubair Razi Tala Anha. Hazrat Asma passed away at the age of hundred. She was very generous, never, and she never returned anybody empty-handed from her doorstep. She was so generous that the inherited garden was sold, and the amount was distributed among the needy and the poor people. Next, paragraph number seven. The main idea running across paragraph number seven is Hazrat Asma Razi Tala Anha. Is a beacon of light of light for us. Beacon of light means mashalera, a source of guidance. She would be remembered for her courage, generosity, and wisdom. Certainly, she had courage. That is why she remained steadfast in front of Abu Jahl. She was generous. She never returned anybody empty-handed from her doorstep. She was wise as well. The way she handled her grandfather, the way she handled so many other situations in her life, this shows her wisdom. Next point: She had firm belief of, upon Allah Almighty. She was the true follower of Islam. Her life is a beacon of light for all of us. She. would be the source of guidance for everybody every muslim for every muslim women as well so this was the synopsis of unit number 4 all the paragraphs are discussed in detail the main points of each paragraph are written beneath now the class work would be all these points would be written in the same way in unit notebooks as they are written in each slide i hope the lecture would be helpful take care Stay home stay safe Allah Hafiz